Frankie de Jong burst onto the scene in that Ajax side a few years back, instrumental in impressive wins against Real Madrid and Juventus in the knockout rounds of the Champions League, and a lucrative move to Barcelona followed. But it's safe to say it hasn't quite happened for him since, despite an upturn in form of late. Manchester United have been heavily lined with the Dutchman for the past couple of transfer windows. But do they actually need him? Let's see. First and foremost, let's take a look at De Jong's career to date. Barcelona's current number 21 started his professional career with Dutch side Willem II. But as you will know, Ajax moved like a bolt of lightning to secure his services after just two professional appearances. A couple of years with Ajax's second team beckoned before Frankie, like a seed with endless possibilities wanting to sprout into a beautiful flower, made the step up to the first team. After spending his first couple of seasons in and out of the team, in 2018-19, De Jong eventually became the heartbeat of the team, full to the brim with talented youngsters. Guided by old heads such as Dusan Tarek and legendary Dutch striker Klaas Jan Huntelaar. That culminated in an unlikely run in the Champions League, where the largely unfenced Ajax made it all the way to the semi-finals, cruelly denied a place in the final by one of the greatest performances in a single half of football you're ever likely to see. A hat-trick and last gasp winner from Spurs man Lucas Maurer. Despite falling at the semi-final hurdle, the European big boys had seen enough, and Frankie de Jong, as well as half of that Ajax team, was onto bigger and better things. So, what happened next for Frankie? The tide had turned in a big way for De Jong, and he was off to sunny Barcelona, a city where other legendary Dutchmen had plied their trade in the past. The likes of Johan Cruyff and Mark Overmar had previously thrilled the Catalan crowd in the famous old shirt. So, Frankie will have been under no illusions as to the task at hand. Unfortunately for the midfield maestro, he arrived at the Camp Nou during one of the biggest overhauls of a Barcelona team we've seen in recent times, and the fans didn't quite take to him. He has constantly been compared to Sergio Busquets. A quite unfair comparison considering what that guy has won, I'm sure you'll agree. However, with the emergence of youngsters as Gavi and Pedri, diehards of the Catalonian outfit are convinced that de Jong simply isn't the future of the team. There are other, more level heads who believe he's been given a fair crack of the whip, but one thing's for sure, should they decide to cash in, there will be no shortages of takers. Would you like to see him at your team? Which brings us nicely onto the Manchester United situation. United have constantly been linked with Frankie de Jong over the past couple of years, and that speculation only intensified last summer as his fellow Dutchman Eric Ten Hag was installed in the Old Trafford hot seat. At the end of last season, United were in disarray. They were crying out for a midfielder who could get his foot on the ball, slow things down and relieve the panic which seemed to engulf the crowd like they were at sea in a storm whenever the ball was contested in midfield. Those prayers were answered with the signing of perennial winner Casemiro last summer. However, that hasn't diminished United's interest in De Jong, and they are thought to still be sniffing around. What type of player is De Jong exactly then? Well, probably not the type of player you believe he is, to be honest. When he was brought through the doors in the summer of 2019, many Barca fans falsely believed that De Jong would be groomed to be the long-term successor of the aforementioned Sergio Busquets. Whoever spread that rumour has some serious answering to do, as De Jong just isn't that player. Yes, he's more of a traditional midfielder than a Messi, for example, and does sit a little deeper, but he likes to burst forward at any given opportunity. Frankie de Jong is the sort of player who needs a Sergio Busquets next to him in order to complement him. He isn't a Busquets replacement, not by any stretch of the imagination. De Jong actually started life as a defender, but Eric Ten Hag himself converted him into an all-action midfield man when the pair were together at Ajax. However much people will compare him to Busquets, Frankie de Jong is his own man and some have argued that he possesses a considerably bigger threat than Busquets going forward, a threat that is now being realised. So, do they actually need him? Man United were a sinking ship at the end of last season, there's absolutely no doubt about it. After years of mismanagement at board level, they were crying out for a direction, a purpose. They got that in the form of Eric Ten Hag, who has steadied said ship and then some. As the Dutch tactician took the reins in sunny old Manchester, United were in the midst of one of their worst ever trophy droughts. The last time they put silverware in the trophy cabinet at Old Trafford is 2017's Europa League win under a certain special one. 
Part of the reason for that steep decline in form was successive managers who didn't seem to have a plan, as well as a board who've been accused of gross negligence when it comes to reinvesting in the playing squad. For the past few seasons, United's starting midfield pairing has been Fred and Scott McTominay. Anyone who's watched even half an hour of Premier League football in their lives knows that you don't win trophies with players of that sort of quality in the middle of the park. Credit where credit is due, however, the first thing Ten Hag did was bring in two world-class central midfielders in the shape of Christian Eriksen and Casemiro. And hey presto, their form was dramatically increased. What do you think of United's midfield right now? No need for Frankie then, right? Well, hold your horses. Frankie de Jong would add incredible depth to a United squad which hasn't been truly competitive since the days of Rooney and Scholes, etc. Yes, their starting midfield pairing is exceptional. Casemiro does an excellent job at plugging holes which frees up Eriksen to pull the strings in midfield. But as we all know, the demands and rigours of modern day football call for strength in depth. We saw evidence of this recently. Casemiro was sent off for a silly incident against Crystal Palace, which earned him an instant three-game ban. In their very next game, it took Leeds United less than a minute to simply waltz through a United backline which parted like the Red Sea, allowing Wilfred Nonto to do his best Moses impression and give Leeds the lead. United managed to salvage a 2-2 draw from the game, but it was worrying for the Old Trafford faithful just how vulnerable they looked without the Brazilian anchoring the midfield. Nowadays, you need a serious squad if you're going to challenge on all fronts, a squad which Manchester United simply don't have at this exact point in time. Someone with the intelligence of Frankie de Jong would be an asset to any big team. A man who can fit in and adapt to a system. I mean, just look at the trees he's been pulling in the La Liga this term. So, do Manchester United need Frankie de Jong? A categorical yes. How could he improve their style of play then? Well, as we mentioned, Frankie is an extremely intelligent player. You simply don't play footballing institutions such as Ajax and Barcelona if you're not. As one pundit on the Athletics Football Podcast put it, United are bad at what de Jong is good at. By this point, we've pointed out to death that Frankie de Jong was never meant to be a replacement for Busquets, and the same would be true if he was to rock up at Old Trafford, where Casemiro is concerned. The Brazilian would be the perfect foil for de Jong, who would be off the proverbial leash with the insurance of the five-time Champions League winner behind him. Think. Paul Scholes arriving late in the box, safe in the knowledge that the often sadistic Roy Keane was mopping up behind him. Depending on formation, De Jong could also function in a three with both Casemiro and Christian Eriksen. After all, Casemiro played in one of the most successful three-man midfields of recent times at Real Madrid with Luka Modric and Tony Cruz. Could we see that formula being repeated at United next season? Eriksen pulling the strings alongside Casemiro, with Frankie bombing on to add a rejuvenated attack? It's certainly possible. What we haven't seen a lot of is Frankie de Jong at number 10. Some have argued that this is his best position, but with just 22 career goals to date, this remains to be seen. What does de Jong himself think about the move to United? When Frankie de Jong was first linked with Manchester United, there were murmurings and suggestions comparing that particular signing with something akin to putting a Rembrandt in a crumbling museum. At the time, that was fair. Nowadays, however, United have turned a corner and offer a drastically improved proposition for the Dutchman. However, there is always that stumbling block of actually having to live in Manchester, one of UK's rainiest cities. By all accounts, Mrs de Jong doesn't quite fancy it either, and one glimpse at her Instagram suggests she's more than happy on the Spanish coast. You know the saying, happy wife, happy life. It has been widely reported that Frankie simply isn't interested in a move to United. But with Eric Ten Hag in charge, a fellow Dutchman, there's certainly a chance he could be persuaded to come and play on the red half of Manchester. There is a feeling amongst football enthusiasts that United might have missed their chance though. Barca seemed willing to let him go last summer, but Ten Hag failed to get the deal over the line. With their recent upturn in form, which could see a first La Liga title in four years at the end of this campaign, they may not be willing to let him go now. De Jong would be a fabulous addition to any team. Manchester United should go all out for him. What do you guys think? Let us know in the comments below.